Since writing my new talk, An Introduction to the World Wide Web for Very Senior Programmers, in which I transport the audience back to the year 1995, I've become somewhat of a proud and nerdy internet historian. So much happened on the web in 1995. HTML 2.0 was released in September and saw the introduction of the HTML image tag, transitioning the online experience from something that resembled reading books and formal documents to flicking through colorful magazines or photo albums. JavaScript was released in December 95, which moved the web from a read-only medium to an interactive experience. Multimedia tools like Macromedia Shockwave Player and FutureWave Future Splash Animator were created in 1995 out of a desire to bring exciting and interactive CD-ROM-like experiences to the browser. While the end user experience was evolving, new tools to support web developers who were building websites were also being invented. The World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C, was formed in 1995. And whilst the first version of CSS was not released until 1996, the 1994 proposal for cascading HTML style sheets was being developed by the W3C. This would give web developers full control over the design of their websites instead of allowing end users to enhance the visuals of their internet surfing experience using proprietary browser configurations. And whilst the web was becoming more visual, so were the tools used to build websites. In 1991, Visual Basic was launched for Windows software application development. Visual Basic was a graphical user interface, or GUI, that provided a visual abstraction layer on top of C and C++ and the Win32 API. For weeks I've been investigating the cabbie killer murders with a certain morbid fascination. This is in real time. I'll create a GUI interface using Visual Basic, see if I can track an IP address. Ryan Lucas describes this historical release in detail in The History and Legacy of Visual Basic, and pays particular attention to how it saved the careers of millions of mainframe COBOL programmers who were looking with terror at the microcomputer invasion, as recalled by the creator of Visual Basic, Alan Cooper. To design their UI, developers can drag and drop out components onto a WYSIWYG canvas. To add behavior to a UI element, they could simply select it and choose a click event handler from a dropdown. Mainframe programmers were suddenly empowered to quickly get up to speed writing Windows apps. Whilst application developers were embracing a more visual way of working in the early 90s, developers on the web were still confined to the command line, notepad, and MS-DOS editor on Windows. That is, until Front Page 1.0 was released in November 1995. Front Page was developed by Vermeer Technologies and was categorized as a World Wide Web publishing and site management tool. Like Visual Basic, Front Page was a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get visual interface, and this tool built HTML. It also provided a personal web server, which allowed you to preview your website on your local machine as you built it. It also included templates, automatic scripts, and more. Front Page was acquired by Microsoft just two months later in January 1996 and was rebranded to Microsoft Front Page in June 96 to coincide with the release of version 1.1. Around the same time, a company called iBand worked on a similar visual tool to Front Page called Backstage Designer. And as is seemingly standard practice in this industry, iBand was acquired by Macromedia in 1996 and soon rebranded the Backstage Designer product as Macromedia Backstage Desktop Studio, which in 1998 became a web development GUI you may be more familiar with, Dreamweaver. Development tools for building games were also evolving in the same way at the same time. Unreal Engine 1, a GUI built in Visual Basic, was also released in 1995. And what's very interesting to note at this point is that while game development has largely adopted visual development tools across the industry, web development seemingly abandoned the visual tools of the mid to late 90s. 30 years later, most of us are still building websites and web applications using text editors. Why is that?
The bottom line is that visual website tools in the 90s and beyond produced terrible HTML markup and therefore pretty terrible websites. I remember fondly using the Apple website builder iWeb in the early 2000s. In fact, it wasn't very long ago that a website I built for a client in 2008 using iWeb was still up and running. The text-based CMS I built for them, which displayed a text file in an iframe that they edited and uploaded via FTP, really stood the test of time. But now I have professional knowledge and experience of building things for the web, I know that the HTML markup that iWeb produced was absolute filthy garbage. And if the HTML markup is garbage, then your site is not accessible to those who use assistive technology such as screen readers. In 1986, IBM announced the first screen reader, but it wasn't until the mid 90s that screen readers started to become a little more accessible themselves when JAWS was released for Windows 1.0 in 1995. The first accessibility guidelines, later branded as the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines or WCAG, were published in January 1995. Yet despite this, tools that were created to build websites were not ever seemingly built with these official standards in mind. This goes for tools built in 1995 and, astonishingly, 2025 as well. On May 7th, 2025, Figma announced Figma Sites, a tool to publish your designs built in Figma directly to the web. But this new product has not been well received. Adrian Roselli warns us, do not publish your designs on the web with Figma sites unless you want to fail all the WCAGs, create litigation risk, close off opportunities in Europe, engage in reputational harm, and oh yeah, throw up barriers to your customers and users. It's no surprise we weren't getting it right in 1995 if we still can't get it right 30 years later with all of this knowledge, experience, and empathy under our belts. And I'm not even going to mention at this point how AI can't get this right either. Of course it can't. It doesn't possess the capacity for empathy. Developers want complete control over their HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and rightly so. If visual web development tools can't generate clean and semantic HTML, organized and debuggable CSS, or performant JavaScript, it really is a no-brainer to continue to build websites and web applications using text-based web frameworks or rolling your own. Full disclaimer, I work for a company called Nordcraft, and I don't want this video to be an ad for Nordcraft, but it's worth mentioning in this context, because visual web development can work. If you're curious about Nordcraft, it's an open source web development engine which combines a web framework with a suite of visual tools that lets designers and developers collaborate when building UIs. And you might think, rightly so, that Nordcraft is just another visual website builder that produces the same old garbage that all the other visual tools do. But speaking as someone who has been building websites and writing code for over 20 years, and as someone who likes complete control over said websites and code, I can say for a fact that Nordcraft is very different. In Nordcraft, your HTML markup is yours to control. You build your HTML structure in the same way you build HTML with text, using semantic element tags of your choosing, with full access to adding attributes and any other web platform-based functionality. Nordcraft does not prescribe how to build your HTML markup. You do. The only difference and advantage is that you are building your HTML on a WYSIWYG canvas where designers can collaborate with you and add design flair as part of the process, not as some preliminary task that sees designs in Figma thrown over the fence in a developer's general direction, which is all too often the case. CSS and JavaScript works in the same way. You have complete control over what you ship to the browser without any unexpected nonsense. It's 2025 and we can do better than what has come before us and what is unfortunately currently unfolding in this visual web development landscape. By giving you full control over the end result you envision, I'm confident that Nordcraft won't suffer the same fate of the early visual tools of the 90s or Figma sites in 2025. Your fate is in your own hands as well as the fate of your websites.